Okay, so what I'm going to speak about today is, uh, I mean, is uh, what came out of my semester in uh, in Marseille and in Lumini, and this is, was uh, um, a semester organized with Alexander Bufetov, and the title of the semester was Integrability and Randomness in Mathematical Physics. Here I have a picture with him, and here is uh, the picture of the last activity that we organized, was the workshop. So each Jean Morlet activity has a, a school, a workshop, and a conference, and this is, is the school. So during this activity, there was uh, the chance to have uh, a lot of uh, visitors and participants, and there were, um, I count uh, eight, 180 participants among junior and more senior faculty, and they came from 25 countries. And we have 54 speakers from nine countries. So this, this semester came out of me and Sasha as a main organizer. And uh, um, we were joined, I mean, we were coming from different backgrounds. Myself, uh, I'm coming from integrable system, nonlinear waves, uh, and soliton theory. And Sasha was uh, as a background in probability and in dynamical system. And uh, the, the outcome of uh, pushing myself to know new fields of mathematics was uh, this, uh, this development of soliton gas. So basically, the study of gas in a random, of a gas of soliton in a random setting. So the team of people I work in and they collaborate during this semester was Marco Bertola, Jenkins, Manuela. Ken McLaughlin was a main uh, was a main also organizer and uh, he provided an SF grant. And then there was my students, uh, Guido Mazzucca and Giuseppe Orsati, and a postdoc Alexander Minaco. Okay, so let's uh, look uh, at the plan of this talk. So what I want to introduce is, is a little bit what uh, what was started during this uh, Jean Morlet chair. And so I want to speak about uh, nonlinear waves and solid tone and uh, what is a soliton gas and to give the qualitative description of a large set of soliton. And then I will introduce the, the kinetic theory of soliton as developed by Zakharov. And then I will comment some connection between random soliton and random matrices. Okay, so what are solitons? So soliton are localized structures. So and they form solitary wave that uh, they travel at constant speed. In one spatial dimension, they are strongly stable. They preserve their shape and uh, while traveling and also after the interaction with other solitons. So these are the main feature of soliton. So they emerge in many, many physical settings uh, and they, they are the production of the interplay between nonlinearity and uh, dispersion or oh, linear effect that can be both dispersion and diffraction. And they can be detected in many models in, of nonlinear waves. We can talk about water waves uh, in, in shallow water or deep water, in optics, in matter waves, uh, and in both high stand condensate. Okay, so let me give the first example of soliton. And uh, this is, is the board. So that these are tidal boards that are appear in a few places in the world, about 10 places in the world. And they appear when, when there is a huge tide difference in the sea, and the, I mean, and this tide then come up to a river against the current. So, and here you can see so these uh, these uh, these waves that are coming up, and they, they are I mean they, they travel for kilometer and then maintain this shape. So this is uh, the soliton that are traveling, keeping their shape. And uh, it's uh, it's custom on this tidal board to have a lot of, of surfers going on. I mean, so this is near Bristol, so you can appreciate surfers, surfers, surfers coming up here. And here is, is in France, in Le Muscaret. And it's, I mean, it's a big fun to, to see this, uh, this natural phenomenon that occur. I mean, it has its highest, uh, highest uh, um, manifestation uh, during the full moon uh, and when the full moon is uh, at uh, the solstice sol in uh, in the in uh, in the spring and autumn another example of soliton they occur in fiber optics so let me start with uh, this lower part of, uh, of the slide so solitons in fiber optics were predicted uh, a long time ago in 1973 by azagawa 
Harper, and then were created experimentally by this group of people, Mullen, Howard, St Stolen, and Gordon in 1980. I mean, because they create uh, 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 the fiber optics that produce these solitons. So here is the picture taken from their paper. And here they, 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 they show this localized soliton that they form in the, in the, in the fiber. And uh, so the soliton pulse uh, change according to the power that is injected in the pulses. And according to the power, we have even several shapes. This is our higher order solitons that uh, are produce uh, increasing the, the intensity of, uh, of, uh, of the pulse in the fiber. And uh, so, I mean, this uh, single soliton-based commercial telecom link, uh, I mean, uh, can be created, I mean, there, there, I mean so far there, are, there is only one in the, I mean, that has been used in the world and is uh, based in Australia and is about 3,000 kilometers long. So the, the mathematical description of, uh, of soliton in optical fiber is the, the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, where psi is a complex uh, function, which depends on x. x is one spatial dimension, t is time, and here t is derivative with respect to time, and x is derivative with respect to space. Okay, so to, to check that how much of these uh, this uh, this equation is good in a solid on fi in a, in a solid in an optical fiber let me also report uh, this uh, this experiment uh, of this group uh, of italian people contient trillo so here i mean so the top uh, figure is the is the numerical solution of the nonlinear schrodinger equation and the lower figure is the optical fiber experiment and so here the initial data is a cosine. So this, uh, on this base here, you see the cosine and here is the evolution. And these lines that are emerging are soliton. So, and you see the, the very good, uh, uh, the very good uh, description given by theory in an experiment. And this is the third example of soliton that I emerged. This is much more recent in Bose-Einstein condensate. So, uh, yeah, there's a chain of seven, seven uh, of seven lithium at uh, atoms of lithium, where they are trapped uh, in such a way that they form a stable bosine and condensate, and these peaks are the soliton that are emerging of these seven atoms. So here you're still in seven peak because there are seven atoms. So this experiment was also produced uh, by another group uh, by E. Cornell in Boulder, and here is uh, is a train of soliton that emerge from a bose einstein condensate pass an obstacle. Okay, so this is our, I mean, uh, appearance of soliton in nature. Now let me, let me give some history. So the first uh, description of a soliton comes back in late 1834 by uh, 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 John Russell, who was an engineer and was uh, conducting an experiment to describe uh, the most efficient way to design a canal for boats. And what he observed, he was surprised, he observed a, a wave which was about 10 meters long and 30 centimeters high, which was traveling for about one mile, so 1.8 kilometer at constant speed without changing its shape. And so th this discovery was then studied independently about 40 years later by Businesque and independently by John Rayleigh, and they gave the first uh, uh, theoretical description of this kind of wave, so they produce a model. And this model is this nonlinear equation. Here Q now is a scalar real function. Again, T is derivative with respect to time, and X is derivative with respect to space. And this equation was first found by Businesque, but I mean, he, he became famous uh, as, uh, as a cortex debris equation. And because it was rediscovered in 1895 by these uh, two Dutch uh, physicists, mathematician, and uh, it's uh, I mean it's the first model for soliton. So the, here we have a nonlinearity and dispersion. So the balance between nonlinearity and dispersion produce localized waves, uh, which are called soliton or waves of translation. And uh, they have an exact form in this case is the such hyperbolic square. And uh, eta is a parameter that determines the amplitude, and uh, the same parameter determines the velocity. So the velocity of the wave and its amplitude are proportional to each other. 
And uh, no, so now, if we if we want to understand what's the role, so we have KDV here, and it has this exact solution. Now here, I want to show you the difference where we keep only nonlinearity or only dispersion. So if we keep only nonlinearity, so here I'm taking eta square equal one over twelve. So the initial data is just a set of amplitude one. And the evolution it becomes multivalue. So the nonlinear effect makes uh, the, 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 this profile become multivalue. So the solution ceases to exist in a classical sense. So we, uh, we reach a point of gradient catastrophe. Now, if we switch only nonlinearity or only dispersion, so the, the, we can solve this equation by linear Fourier transform, and we have the composition in all the Fourier mode. So when nonlinearity and dispersion cooperate, you end up having these stable profiles. It doesn't change in time and is very, very stable also from the mathematical point of view. Okay, so now let me, so this is, was, uh, was uh, KDV and this, this equation, I mean, uh, I mean apart from, uh, from cortex dv become unnoticed for a long time. And it was, uh, let's say, resuscit resuscitating from oblivion by Martin Kruskal and Norman Zabuski in 1965, because they made uh, the first uh, numeric, I mean, they were doing first numerical experiment on PDEs, uh, and they saw numerically this equation were inserting here a small, uh, small epsilon, which means small dispersion, and they took uh, the cosine x uh, as initial data. So here in this dashed line that you see in the bottom, this is the COSEX initial data. And then they study, so this is the, the picture from the original paper. They studied the evolution. What they see was the emergence of these solitons, so this train of soliton. And this was a recurrence behavior. So after waiting on time, the picture was coming back to itself. So they were really surprised about, about the emergence of this uh, recurrence behavior in the solution, and they thought that something interesting was happening. And so the, the equation was studied intensely, and uh, people were looking to integrate the equation. That was what we were looking for. And uh, so the inspiration was uh, how to integrate it was to find a change of coordinate that, that uh, was successful for the Burgers equation. So in 5051, Cole and Opf linearized the Burgers equation. So this equation is nonlinear, but now it's dissipative. And they linearize it using the, 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 this transformation to the heat equation. So, and the idea was uh, to look for something similar. And so what they managed to do in 1967, Garden, Green, Rushville, and Mura, so they associate uh, so they associate the KDV equation, they connect it to the scattering data, which I call S of T, of the linear Schrodinger equation. So what does this mean? It means that if Q here evolves according to KDV, the scattering data S of T for this linear operator, so it means uh, is, uh, is discrete spectrum, is continuous spectrum, the norming constant of the discrete spectrum, then the scattering data evolves linear in time. Basically, this observation, fundamental observation, linearize the equation. So it's a change of coordinate that makes a nonlinear equation linear. And this was a really a breakthrough, a, I mean, a great breakthrough, and basically uh, was the discovery of integrability in an infinite dimensional system. So Till 1967, integrability was thought to be a phenomenon really re rare, uh, restricted to a finite set of examples and with only finite degrees of freedom. This discovery basically make a nonlinear integrable system, uh, I mean, the, a nonlinear infinite dimensional integrable system, and was the starting point of uh, the modern theory of integrable system. Okay, so in a few years later, five years later, Zakharov and Shabbat derive the integrability of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, and then many more, many other equations follow, and in particular, Peter Lacks was able to formalize, so uh, to formalize the integrability concept, and he derived what is known nowadays like Lacks pair. 
Okay, so let me summarize what it means integrate. So we start uh, with an initial data. So we want to solve uh, the KDV equation on the line. So integrability is also depends on the boundary condition. So if you change boundary condition, the same equation might not be integrable. But on the line, so the equation is associated with the linear Schrodinger equation. And so we start at t equals zero. We have initial data in a, in a good space. And the direct scattering means to associate to this initial data the spectral data of the Schrodinger equation at time t equals zero. And this direction was very already existing in the literature, it was pioneered by Fadeyev. And then later Marchenko and Dived and Trubowitz, uh, I mean, put in order the mathematical detail. Then uh, by the G G Garden Green Krushka Muir equation, we have uh, the time, the evolution of the scattering data, and this is, is a linear evolution. And then we come back also with a nonlinear problem. And this is the, the, the coming back to the non coming back from scattering data at time t to the solution q of x t was provided by this inverse problem that was already solved by Gelfand, Levita, and Marchenko. Okay, so the, 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 key, the key contribution, I mean, of Garden, Green, Kirsch, and Mura was to understand that this map is linear and to connect uh, this, uh, this, uh, the linear Schrodinger equation to the KDV. So since I'm talking about soliton, so what is an n-soliton solution in this setting? Does an n-soliton solution correspond to scattering data that have only discrete spectrum, while continuum spectrum is equal to zero? So there is only a finite set of point spectrum with a corresponding norming constant. So the spectrum is a constant of motion, while the constant, the norming constant, evolves linear in time. Uh, so integrable in time. Okay, so what uh, so what uh, what uh, gives integrability? So integrability gives uh, a complete control of the behavior of the solution, and in particular, if we have initial data with good decay at infinity, and I mean in a good class, this is enough. So the the solution decompose as t goes to infinity in soliton plus radiation. So what you see for after a, a long time is a bunch of soliton plus radiation that travels in the opposite direction. This radiation, I mean, has been uh, subject to intense study and it's not uh, completely and uniform, the description of the radiation part uh, for KDV. There is uh, Percy Dyett, uh, Kemen Claffin, Thomas Klickerbau and Thomas Birman that are finishing completing the, the, the asymptotic description of KDV as T goes to infinity. But let me show with a picture what, uh, what uh, all these results that involve a huge number of mathematicians is about. So we have an initial data which was localized. And uh, what, here, what you see after a long time, and here long means 10, not, not more than 10, is a radiation that travels on, uh, on, on the left and uh, three solitons uh, that travel to the right. So and this is typical for all these kind of equations which have dispersion. Okay? So nonlinearity plus dispersion, we have a, a soliton that travel to the right and some radiation that travel to the left. And this radiation decreases in time as t to the alpha, where alpha is bigger than zero, while the soliton have their shape. Okay, so now let me let me talk about soliton interaction. And this is, you know, is an important feature of integrability. So here in this plot, uh, you, you have seen I'm not sure I'm able to go back. Uh, in this plot, you have seen the, the evolution of three solitons. So the bigger was to the left and the smaller was to the right. And after they interact, they emerge with the same shape. So of course, uh, if we consider this equation, I mean, cubic, so we change the nonlinearity. So we put a number three here, this equation is not integrable anymore. And uh, what was proved by Munoz is that uh, uh, so the, the soliton, so in this generalized, so any here is an integer, so soliton interact uh, in an elastic way, so without changing their shape, if and only if the equation is integrable. 
And this is in this case, it's also only for KDV when n is equal to one and for modify KDV when n is equal to two. And uh, in a sequel of papers by Martel and Mertel, Merle, Merle and Martel, that started in 2011, but they wrote several papers on this issue, they describe, they give a very precise description of uh, non-elastic interaction between soliton. And non-elastic means that the soliton, after they interact, they change their shape. The, the, the smaller become even smaller and the bigger become even bigger. And then there is a, a radiation terms that uh, is going. So this is, means non-elastic interaction because the soliton don't uh, change their shape after interaction. So a definition of integrability in this setting can be that the soliton have to interact uh, in, uh, in an elastic way. Okay, so um, now I want to, to come to the main topic of my talk and is uh, uh, the description of a large set of soliton. So the idea of a soliton gas, so it means a, a large set of soliton that, uh, that uh, you consider them as a gas. So is due to Zakharov and uh, he introduced in 1971, just after, I mean, the, the theory of soliton was starting to develop. This idea of a uh, gas of soliton, uh, he tried to understand how these uh, soliton interact. So here you have to think about soliton as particle with travel with constant velocity V1 and V2. And then when they interact, we have a box here, but what we know is that they emerge after interaction only with a shift. So they don't change their shape and the effect of their, of their interaction is only a small shift in their velocity. Here, the shift of, is calculated explicitly and this is the phase shift of soliton. So for two soliton with velocity V1 and V2, where V1 and V2 is equal to four eta one square, this is the velocity of the soliton, so this, the phase shift is given by this formula. So we have a logarithmic kernel here. So the 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 the, the, the slower soliton, so V1 is the lower soliton. It looks like it's even slower, and the, so as a negative phase shift, and the faster soliton has a positive phase shift. So this is, is uh, the the clue observation to for Zaccaro to derive the kinetic theory of soliton. At the time, I mean, I mean, he was working Zaccaro on the, the weak wave turbulence theorem, but and it was clear to him that uh, integrable system cannot have weak turbulence, but still he has this idea that, I mean, you can describe and can give some information of a, a larger set of soliton in an integrable system. So what was uh, what uh, what was this paper about? So this is a two-page paper, and so introduced the concept of soliton density, which is uh, rho, and so this rho it depends on eta, the, the spectrum of the soliton, and the position x and t. So namely, this quantity times the eta and the x uh, represent uh, the number of soliton per unit length uh, at time t in the element uh, eta between eta and eta plus d eta and x, x plus dx. So a diluit gas of soliton is a gas for which uh, if we integrate over the spectral variable, we have a quantity less, much less than one. Okay, so and uh, so, is, uh, so it means uh, for, for unit length, if you look at position x at time t, we don't have much soliton, so if we integrate over all values of eta. So what it derived then is uh, an equation for this density. So we have a continuity equation. So this soliton density evolve uh, as a conservation law, as it should be. And uh, the velocity here, I mean, satisfy a nonlinear uh, uh, integral. So uh, an integral is given by this integral equation where the, this is the free so, the density the velocity of the free soliton plus a correction terms uh, that depends on the soliton density so this is the free density the free soliton velocity and a correction term and uh, so this is, was in 1971 so 30 years later uh, 
GANADL uh, it was able to extract uh, the velocity of uh, a soliton in a soliton gas uh, when the gas is dense. Uh, and so the correction to Zakharov equation is the following. So this velocity here becomes uh, uh, is satisfy an integral equation. Mm, so this v this uh, this v now in the previous uh, in the previous slide was replaced by the free soliton velocity here. There was four k square minus four eta square, and now we get an integral equation. And so these two equations together takes the name now Zaccaro L kinetic equation. And they have been extended. So this is where derived for KDV, and they were extended in several directions to many other equations by many contributions. Here we have Helen Kamchakton, Helen Kobe, Pelinowski, Shugalina, and Pelinowski and Do Doitix, and many others. So I want to stress, uh, I mean, uh, the difference between this, uh, this, uh, this kinetic equation for soliton with respect to what we know for uh, the, for example, is entropic order equation. We have a conservation of uh, of, of uh, conservation law for the density, but the velocity itself satisfies a conservation law where here p is the pressure of the density. Okay, so this is uh, is uh, is really a different equation, and uh, so the main feature here is that the velocity satisfies an integral equation where this kernel. Is, uh, is coming from the soliton interaction. So as the structure uh, is obtained from so two soliton interaction. Okay, so, and uh, this uh, equation, so uh, this uh, Zaccaro type, uh, Zaccaro L type equation have appeared recently since 2016 in the statistical mechanics of classical and quantum integrable system in the thermodynamic limit, and have been named generalized hydrodynamic. So the word generalized is as opposed to classical hydrodynamic, where you obtain this kind of equation. While if you have an integrable system, so the, the integrability move the, the, the conservation, so the equation for the velocity to an integral equation. And here there are many contributions and many groups of people are working on, uh, have been working on, uh, on this uh, new development in the statistical mechanics of integrable system. Okay, so now I want to say a few words uh, about uh, what, we, what we have been doing uh, during my stay. And uh, so the, the first goal is to understand the, so the behavior of solution of integrable equation with an infinite number of solito. And looking in the literature, there was not much. So there was these works of Last and Livermore, where they describe, uh, so putting a small dispersion here, the, the behavior of uh, Q of the of Q of uh, initial data Q that does not depend on epsilon, then Q of X and T epsilon as epsilon goes to zero. So the solution is uh, contains uh, a number of soliton, which we call N of epsilon, that uh, it's uh, it goes like one over epsilon. So, so it's an initial data that uh, contains one over epsilon times a constant number of soliton. And then there was another paper in 1992 by Gesesti, Karkovsky, and Zal, which also were able to prove the existence of uh, infinite soliton limit for KDV when uh, we give some condition on the point spectrum. So there must be some condition that this point spectrum must be a sequence that lies in infinity and the norming constant also they have to lie in L1. Okay, so what we did, and I'm uh, hope to be in time. So we construct a uh, dense solid of gas, so this, uh, this, uh, this concept of uh, introduced by Zaccaro Fennel as a limit of infinite soliton. And uh, this is was done for the KDV, the focusing modifying KDV equation, and then on linear Schrodinger equation. And we express the solution of this, uh, of this equation as a second log deriv x derivative of a Friedon determinant. Basically, it's a, the representation of an infinite soliton solution as a, a log derivative of a Friedon determinant. 
Then uh, we, we put in this gas, so we have an infinite set of soliton, and then we put a bigger soliton with respect to all these dense gas, and we determine the velocity of this tracer solito that travels in this solito gas. And this is satisfying a complicated, very complicated equation that uh, in itself is not very illuminated. But anyway, if we average this velocity, so if we average this velocity over the, 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 the typical length, the typical scale of the soliton gas, then the average velocity of the tracer soliton, we prove it that satisfies the Zakharov L kinetic equation. And uh, so this is uh, all this has been developed in a deterministic setting. And what uh, is uh, surprising is that, I mean, the theory was developed in the presence of randomness. But so the feature that we find out, uh, I mean, in this mathematical setting are, I mean, the same as is in the presence of a random setting. So this work was initiated in, uh, in Lumini, and uh, the first paper came out in 2021, I mean, two years later, and then uh, there is this series of papers that came out later. And uh, so the on, now the ongoing project that, uh, uh, that we are still working is to try to put, so we were able to, to build a soliton gas with infinite number of soliton when density is fixed and is not random. So to create a rand randomness, uh, we, so we have an ongoing project where we choose uh, the, the, the spectrum of the soliton from random matrix ensemble. And with this choice, since there are lots of results uh, on random matrix en ensemble we, that we can use, we are able to show that the n soliton solution minus the infinite soliton is a Gaussian random variable. And this is already not uh, a trivial result. And we hope to use this to to prove and to derive the, the Zaccaro kinetic equation in the random setting. Okay, so I think I'm done. I just want to thank everybody. So I want to give a huge thank to the CIRMA and the chairman of the initiative. And in particular, okay, to Patrick, Foulon, Pascal Hubert, and Alexander that uh, really they gave me a uh, huge scientific and human support, uh, gave me the chance to work in a really thriving environment where there were a lot of people coming and have the chance to meet, uh, I mean, new, new scientific community and uh, to, to really work very well. And then I want to thank, of course, all uh, the administrative support, the scientific secretary, Celine Montiguler, that was, I think, uh, has left uh, CERM and uh, Stephanie, Guyane, Karen, Olivia, and Natalie and Fabienne. And finally, I want to recognize, uh, I mean, to the funding that we received from CERM. I mean, uh, so this is, was not possible without all the funding that was received, in particular for CERM, the Fruman, the E2, universe, uh, the Université de Marseille, the Institute Archimede, the CNRS. So there were separate funding from CNRF obtained by Mattia Cafaso from NSF, uh, obtained by Kemet Laughlin, and then we receive also funded by Clay Mathematical Institute, uh, a, a small funded by CISA and by these uh, two action. And this was the ERC of uh, Alexander Buffetto. So I, I'm, thank you everybody again, and I'm finished. Thank you very much, Mara. Very interesting. Many solitons. Are there any <laughs> in the assembly? Why they are thinking? Um, I'm having uh, questions. Uh, is there any link with rogue waves? Yeah, yeah, there is a link. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can you can generate when you put in focusing on the left. Uh, a lot of these uh, these soliton. I mean, all, you can also generate a gas of uh, of uh, rock waves, uh, which are called breeders. So this is, has been studied by Gennady and Alexander Tobis. You can generate also gas of breeders. Yeah. So are there rock waves which are not on the sea? You have rock waves in uh, in lithium, Bose-Einstein condensate, or things like that. Uh, Do you think it's possible? 
This is, I don't think it's possible. Well, I don't know, actually. I, I don't know how, how much, uh, because this both Einstein Conde said arcade for a very short time. I mean, so this is, uh, they are not very stable because this, this trap that is created with the both Einstein Conde said is uh, near to zero temperature and not very stable. But in op optical fiber, they are able to generate them. So, uh, experiment in op optical fiber, they can generate uh, these uh, these uh, these waves. Yeah, okay. these freak waves, giant waves. Yeah. Thank you very much. More question? Oh, uh, just you are not forced to answer, but maybe you have also memories. Sorry, I don't hear you Maybe well, you actually. Some memories you would like to share. Something you remember, good memories or bad memories? Oh, yes. From... I have, uh, well. <laughs> From here. <laughs> no, I have, uh, well, I have many memories. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, in particular, I mean, uh, even uh, so, uh, where, where, where the walks uh, with uh, Alexander Alexander at, uh, at the seaside, I mean, so regarding uh, uh, not scientific memories, uh, so the fantastic bouillabaisse uh, at uh, at the ah. at the conference dinner that we have, and uh, so the very very nice uh, walks uh, that uh, we used to have during the conference with the visitors. So the place uh, is is prone to having walks. Uh, so this is a very nice memory. That uh, I mean, I, I really looking forward to come back and enjoy again this uh, this uh, this uh, I means naturalistic environment of uh, Lumini. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Yeah.